Welcome to Movie Recap, a channel dedicated to those addicted to movies. Our focus is to showcase the best recap of your favorite flick. Sit back, grab your popcorn and get ready to be amazed by I Saw the Devil. Taxi driver Kyung Chul finds a terrified female driver stuck in a broken down car on a pitch black road. He stops, but not to assist her. The woman's distraught fiancé, Kim soo Hyun, a former secret agent, gets fixated on finding her attacker after finding her head in a nearby river. Things get tangled once he locates Kyung Chul. Kim releases the killer after giving him a severe beating, setting off a bizarre game of cat and mouse. Spoilers ahead. A girl by the name of Juyin is shown with a punctured car tire at the start of the film. She is on the phone with her fiancé, Kim Soo Hyun, a NIS officer, while she waits for the tow truck. Then Jang Kyung Chul, a male, walks up to her and offers to examine her automobile. When she tells her boyfriend about Kyung Chul, he advises her to lock the car doors and wait for the tow truck so she shouldn't worry. Kyung Chul now approaches her as soon as she hangs up the phone and informs her that her automobile is totally sunk. After thanking him for his assistance and stating that she would wait for the vehicle, Kyung Chul departs from that location. She does, however, observe that he is still sitting in his car and is not getting out of it. Then all of a sudden he tackles her car, smashing the window to get inside. When Jian tries to flee, he captures her and uses a hammer to attack her, knocking her out cold. The screen then goes black as he begins pulling her out into the snow. Jian is then shown naked and covered in a plastic bag before she abruptly wakes up. Kyung Chul secures the other end of a chain to a wooden pole and fastens it to her hand. Then he approaches her and remarks, it looks like it will be easy because her skin is so soft. She begs him to spare her life because she is expecting a child. After hearing this, he begins to consider things, but he ends up killing her. Then, while we watch, he chops off portions of her body and tosses them into a box. In the process, Jian's wedding ring falls out. He searches for it but fails to find it, so he discards the corpse parts into a nearby stream. The following day, after a boy finds one of Ju Yun's ears, a large contingent of police, commanded by Ju Yun's distraught father, Section Chief Oh and Squad Chief Jang, show up to search the girl. Oh requests that he remain at home, and they will update him. When they eventually come across a head, the investigator contacts the forensics unit to examine it. Now that the head has been removed from the water and placed inside a box, they begin to remove it. However, because of the large throng, one of the forensic team members trips and falls, causing the head to fall out of the box. Kim is astonished to discover that the head is Ju Yun's. Kim now assures her, later on at her burial, that he will hold her killer accountable for her suffering. He then goes to his supervisor and requests a two-week leave of absence. His boss assures him that he can take a longer leave of absence if he so chooses, but he says he only needs the two weeks. Next, he meets his subordinate, who hands him a capsule that has a microphone and GPS on it. Later on, he finds out about the four primary suspects from Jang, who has already been charged with related offenses. Now, that evening, he breaks into one of the suspects' homes, assaults him, and kidnaps him. After severely hurting him, he leaves after Kim questions him but does not obtain any information. After that, we see the suspect in the hospital, where Chief O finds out that he has handed himself into the police on the grounds that he killed the girls that were discovered a few years and two months ago. When Chief O hears this, he is taken aback and asks him about what happened the night before. He simply requests for assistance. The other suspect is then pursued by Kim, who strikes him with his car but does not obtain any information from him either. That evening, Kyung Chul, posing as a helper, forces a girl who is standing by herself on the road to sit in his school van. However, after driving a while, he pulls over on a remote road, hits her in the head with a pipe to render her unconscious, and then mutilates her as well. Now, the next day, Kim goes to Kyung Chul's home in his capacity as an insurance salesman. He discovers that Kyung Chul has been separated from his parents and kid for a long time, but he gets his son's address. Then, after breaking into his home covertly, he discovers the location where Kyung Chul murders girls. It is only then that he discovers Jo Young's ring in a drain that establishes Kyung Chul's guilt. Soon after, Kyung Chul abuses a schoolgirl by taking her home. He doesn't stop until Kim calls his name from behind, at which point he picks up a sickle. He now runs into Kim outside to check and inquires as to whether or not he is a police officer. Kim dodges and strikes him as he questions how the police located him so soon. He gives the aggressive order to rush toward him and attack. After giving him a severe beating, he pushes Kyung Chul down and suffocates him with plastic wrap to render him unconscious as he tries to flee. 
Then, just as he is ready to kill him by hitting his skull with a stone, he chooses to insert a GPS tracker down his throat instead, giving him the ability to monitor his movements in real time and hear the conversations he has. Now, when Kyung Chul finds a packet next to him when he wakes up hurt, he's shocked to see how much cash is inside. After that, he makes his way to a tiny village where he sees a doctor to get himself bandaged. A nurse then asks him to collect his medication. After that, he approaches the nurse and begins to flirt with her, which causes her to feel a little uneasy before leaving. Nevertheless, he eventually confines the nurse to a room and has her undress. Kyung Chul gets upset because she begs him not to do it. Then he begins to sexually abuse her, but Kim follows him there and knocks him out. Now, as the nurse is ready to go, he stops her and informs her that he will require medical attention. Subsequently, he cuts his Achilles tendon and stabs his foot with a knife before releasing him again. Kyung Chul searches for the tracker after having a suspicion that Kim has placed one on him, but he is unable to locate it. Afterwards, Chief Jang phones Kim and requests that he stop since the police believe he is pursuing Kyung Chul and that they are also pursuing him. Afterwards, Ju Yun's sister Se Yun converses with him and informs him that her return is unlikely. In response, he states he has nothing else to say to her before hanging up the phone and declaring that the conversation is still worthwhile. Kyung Chul pays a visit to the cannibal and murderous friend Taeju, who resides with his girlfriend Seyoung. Once he has explained his predicament to Taeju, the latter surmises that the person pursuing him must be a family of one of his victims. Later that evening, Kyung Chul remembers Ju Yun's engagement ring, which Kim had previously worn before attacking him, and as a result, infers Kim's identity. Taeju, in the meantime, kidnaps a girl and intends to murder her, but before he can harm her, the music abruptly ends. He switches the music back on, but when he looks back, the girl is nowhere to be found. He now goes in search of her, but before he can assault Kim, she overwhelms him and stabs him in the hand with a knife. Then he fastens him with chains. Just as Kim is about to amputate his hand, Kyung Chul appears and attempts to shoot him. Nevertheless, Kim leaps out the window to get away from there. The following day, the police take Taeju and Seyoung into custody and take them to the hospital while they are still unconscious. While receiving treatment, Kyung Chul, who is barely conscious, overhears Su Hyun and the subordinate discussing the transmitter. Once again, Kim lets Kyung Chul go. When he visits a pharmacist to buy pills, Kyung Chul tries to communicate with him via the transmitter, telling him that he knows who he is and that he should not have taken him for granted. He tells him that Ju Yun told him she was pregnant before she passed away as they are having a conversation inside a pharmacy. The man he left inside the pharmacy is dead, he says, as he exits the store while consuming laxative tablets. Kim then goes inside Taeju's hospital room to interview him. It is then that she discovers, too late, that Kyung Chul is going to surrender himself to the police and pursue squad chief Jang and his other daughter, Jang Seyun. Before Kim could answer the phone, someone knocks on the door. He quickly turns his car around and phones Chief Young. Chief O becomes enraged upon learning about Kim's disclosure of all this when he receives a call. After inflicting serious injuries on Chief Young, we witness Kyung Chul slamming a dumbbell into his face. Chief O is upset with Kim when he gets there later, but he later lets him enter and meets Chief Jang, who is seriously hurt. Then, Kyung Chul phones Chief O and requests a conversation with Kim. While the police discover Seiyun's dead body, soon after, Kyung Chul turns himself into the police in an attempt to evade Kim's retaliation. But Kim kidnaps Kyung Chul in front of the police as he drives by. He is then led to the previous warehouse, where he is put beneath a makeshift guillotine and informed that, although he was mistaken to underestimate him, he will now treat him fairly. He then sticks the cigarette in his eye, causing him to scream in agony and plead with him to kill him. After that, Kim exits, locking him and preventing the blade from falling by having him hold a rope between his teeth. It's only then that he hears his son's voice and realizes that his old parents, despite his hushed protests, his family opens the door, and this sets off another mechanism that Kim set up, dropping the blade and brutally beheading Kyung Chul in front of his family. Kim, who was hearing through the transmitter from a distance when Kyung Chul eventually passed away, sobs. We really hope you enjoyed today's recap of I Saw the Devil. Please leave a comment below of what you loved about the movie and why. Be sure to like the video and please don't forget to support our channel by subscribing so you don't miss any amazing content. Until next time, lights, camera, action. We look forward to seeing you in our next video.